Amy. How you doing? Hey, Greg. How are you tonight? Not bad. I'm good. How are you? So we've talked uh, for a while about, uh, you know, getting together and uh, on video here and talking about uh, where we met Hugh and uh, what we've learned um, about the truth of his story. And uh, I think you got a lot to say, Amy. Uh, so I'm just going to let you uh, take it away. Okay. Um, well, my, I first met Hugh, I know was probably when I was 15, um, when I was on my own, I left home at early age and had to have money to have a place to live. And so the only job that would hire me was stripping. And so I did that for a while. And he also played in his band and um, he's played there more than once at the place that I'm I don't remember the name of the bar, though. I mean, that's from a long time ago. But it was for high flute people, so lawyers and doctors and people from the courthouse and anything and everything you could think happened there. It's not a, not a good place, but they got away with it anyways. Then the next time, I guess I'd have to say I even thought of you was later in my life when I was looking into lots of information. But the main one that I came across was the boy in the box. And I watched several videos on it. Well, in the video that I had watched, there was a, there was a comment from Hugh saying that that was his twin and they killed him. And so I was curious who he was. So I, you know, put his name, did some research to find out who he was. Saw him on the Do Dan Bodandi show, I think it is. I don't know what his real show is called, but he was on there with another guy with a mask, and they were interviewing him. And <clears throat> the guy in the mask kept basically discounting everything he was saying. And I, seriously, I took what he had to say very deeply because what I knew what he would say was true. I knew from the very time he even said anything that what he was saying was true. So I just did some more research, looking into him, trying to figure out, you know, how everything all plays in because I had already done study on the Guidestones. I had done study on um, the Mandela effect. That was another one. Um, quite a different like Black Lives Matter, uh, all the groups causing havoc. I mean, I've been through kind of a little bit of everything. But after I found Hugh, that was it. I got rid of all those people because they don't make no sense. You know? Yeah. You can only get the truth from a truthful person. And the only thing that they're spreading is lies. And you're from the same area in Michigan that he's from. And it's interesting that you mentioned the strip clubs because he talks about how he primarily went even, even young. Like, so that verifies a piece of a story in and of itself because he talks about how he was playing in strip clubs at 15 years old with bottom line band that he had admitted. And, uh, you know, some naysayers would say, well, no, you can't do that nowadays. Well, no, but you got away with it back in the 70s. And it's interesting that here you are verifying yeah. that they, you were 15 years old dancing in a club. And so clearly they weren't um, afraid of. Oh, the, oh and the, the place, sorry, the place is called Omar's. I just remembered it. So I wanted to get that in there. Okay. Omar's. Yeah. Yep. Very interesting how that, that verifies a piece of his story right there, uh, that they were not afraid of hiring underage participants, at both to play and to dance. People will sometimes right. try to uh, naysay some of Hugh's story because it sounds a little uh, like, uh, well, no, it's against the law to do something like that. So, But then here you and he both have the same sort of story in the same area talking about doing the same things and i think there will probably be some more examples that might uh, come to light uh, as we talk here of such incidences so you were talking about how you researched yeah, the Georgia guide a little bit oh yeah so uh yeah i did i uh, 
the research I did on that um, came up with um, J.C. Christensen, which I don't know if you're familiar with the name, and I don't know if you're familiar what the gore, the the guidestones actually stand for. You know what is written on them and what it means. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and for a long time, everybody kept saying that is part of the newer world order. Blah 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 blah. That's the control, and this is the only amount of people we're supposed to have, and making this big deal out of something that it didn't even make any sense. Right. You know. Alex Jones did that. Yes. I followed Alex Jones for a while, but yeah. I knew he was yes, crap too. I knew that he was lying when I watched him infiltrate supposedly the place in the in California where they have supposedly yeah, Bohemian Grove. Where, uh -huh. Yeah, there you go. Where they have the meetings and the owl and not the human sacrifice and not and he supposedly snuck in there with a camera. Oh, come on. I knew from the nobody's ever been able to do it before him. And then all of a sudden he's able to. Right. Well, what gives you special powers? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then I linked <clears throat> I also linked um what's his name? Bill Cooper with the pale white horse to you too and then i you know i just kept going and your camera is following your cat there just so you know no it'll shut it off stupid thing yeah she's got an uh, electronic uh camera that uh, follows heat and every time her cat moves behind her it follows yeah he and he's not on now he won't turn back on now Hang on. That'll work. Come on. Sorry about that. Oh, I had it that time. Yeah, you were talking, uh, you know, that the first story that you uh, saw from uh, Hugh there was about the boy in the box. I probably should have started with that and got into that more. Yeah. Um, now, I'll, and I was just researching that a little bit ago. And, of course, um, as, as you know, but maybe the listeners don't know, I'm currently writing Hugh's book. So I was looking into that just today and adding portions of it into, into one of the chapters. Um, because it's really, really important to, to put that in there. What happened there was um, in 1957, the same year as uh, Hugh was abducted by the Osborne family, which was the family of the former governor of Michigan, Chase Osborne. Uh, mm -hmm. He and Anderson, Andrews, and Daryl Hall, the musician, were all rapists that were abducting kids and raping kids, uh, boys and girls alike, down in a basement um, in the former governor's uh, house there. Um, now, the boy in the box was the same year as that abduction, 1957. He was four years old at the time. And right. the forensic reconstructions that I saw strongly resemble Hugh as a young guy, as a young boy at four years old. So and I, I've seen Hugh's pictures, and I've seen the, the drawings that the police made of that um, of that boy that was found murdered and placed in that box. And you mentioned J.C. Christensen, and it's interesting because the boy was found in a J.C. Penney's box. And none of this stuff is coincidence because it all, uh, they, they copy every part of his life. And then the person that wrote the book is also the name of one of the rapists uh, who wrote one of the books. I just ordered it, but I, my, uh, I wish my brain could uh, remember it fast enough. Um, <laughs> but I can't. Um, and they play out everything. Every aspect of his life is played out in movies, videos, uh, media of all sorts, news stories constantly, uh, and tons and tons of books. Everything surrounds him and then doesn't mention anything that happened. This boy was thrown in a field in Pennsylvania. He was washed, and it even said that in the book, okay? He was washed um, and Hugh says the Osbournes would have watched the boys. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Osborne would always wash the boys before raping them. And right there in the book, it says, uh, right there in chapter one, it says the, um, they found this boy washed and clean you know, and wrapped up in a blanket. Um, and so Hugh automatically understands this was the work of the same rapist that had abducted him and killed the kids right in front of him uh, and later threw kids on his property uh, throughout his life. It's interesting, this book starts, the very first sentence says, and a letter to Hugh, right there at the very beginning, or I mean a letter to H, not Hugh, it doesn't say Hugh, but it says in a, in a response to the letter H, or and I don't even know exactly what it's talking about because I haven't bought the book yet, I just bought it, but it's amazing that it, it, right there in the first line, they're already alluding to Hugh. Uh, I'm, I'm amazed at, at, now this book was made in 2007, okay, oh, Hoffman was his name, okay, now I remember, it wasn't, he wasn't the a rapist, it was Hoffman that made it, and the interesting thing about his name Hoffman, well, um, he was also detained for the murder of Jimmy Hoffa in 76, now, um, so, so you have a guy in 2007 with the name of something that happened to Hugh in 76, okay? And he addresses it on the very first line of chapter one to somebody named H. It's amazing how right. all of it goes together. <laughs> and it's obvious what they're doing. So, so, and that's not the only time that they, that Hoffa, Hoffman, um, who's that actor, um, the, uh, the other guy with uh, Hoffman, his name, I can't think of his name. Who's the other actor? You think of it. But anyway, uh, uh, he, he's um, he came out about the same time too, as some as some of the events that happened in, in Hugh's life. So all these things go together. And I wish I wish like I could put it together in my head fast enough. But that when I write it, I have hundreds of pages of notes, but I can't hold it all in my head. I'm just my brain just doesn't hold it all. Um, right. I'm a great writer, but I'm not fast on my feet when thinking about it. So well, I the boy in the box is actually his twin. Yeah, he was. He actually, he actually has a photo of him and the, his twin in a stroller being pushed by their mother. Right, right. Yeah, so he knows, but then his mother really would never tell him the truth about who that boy was in the stroller. Yeah, he did mention right. that. Right. Um, and then they took him from Michigan and dumped him in Pennsylvania. And why wouldn't they? I mean, that's far enough away that they're not going to even be looking for him to be from a different state. Not back then. Right. They're going to think it's a local child. Right. <clears throat> so he was dumped in a field in Pennsylvania, and then Flight 93 on 9-11 also went down in a field in Pennsylvania, which is not just a uh, coincidence. Right. So... Then you had, okay, he was found in a J.C. Penney's box, and then Hugh ended up working for um, J.C. Christensen, who built the Guidestones. It actually says on the yeah. Guidestones, R.C. Christensen, but yeah. there was a reason for that. Um, sometimes he went by R.C. Christensen, and he worked for J.C. Christensen Corporation, where he designed some of the robots and machinery that uh, went into the production lines that uh, created cars in Detroit and Cleveland and Toledo areas. Um, that Those machines that Hugh invented, one of which was taken by somebody, it was just to be used on the assembly line, and someone took that invention and created what we all have used, uh, a electronic stud finder. Um, so Hugh was full of robotics and engineering understanding and and created a lot of the wealth that gave jc christensen this huge amount of money that he was then able to make into the georgia guidestones now um you mentioned that the georgia guidestones don't mean what alex jones twisted them to mean for example, right. one of the main uh, one of the tenets that everybody likes to point out is that it says to maintain a population under five hundred million. But who J.C. Christensen was, and he uh, he also worked there at Christensen Corp with an Indian, and I don't remember the Indian's name, but uh, the 
Indian, his values got put into the Georgia Guidestones. This was a Mother Earth religion, and it, he made the stones to survive a catastrophe that he said if, you know, basically if the world were to almost end tomorrow and civilization had to restart, these stones are made kind of like Stonehenge. They'll be here for thousands of years. So somebody can read these after the catastrophe and say, well, we can, you know, we shouldn't maybe not let the world get so populated so as to cause another man-made catastrophe that wipes out half the people on the earth. He was never calling for um, anybody to be killed. He didn't want murders to actually happen or anything like that. He just was saying, you know, the no, earth. No, it's earth. actually part of an Indian prayer. There you go. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually part of an Indian prayer is what it is. And it's, it's the way that the Indians try to protect Mother Earth because Mother Earth has given us so much, okay? And um, the Creator has given us mu much. They believe in the Creator, too. Yeah. So um, that's, what he, that, that's what they're trying to say. If, if these stones outlast and there are some remaining, you know, this is what you need to do to keep the, you know, the world to survive. Right. You know? And it, it's just an Indian prayer about it. Right. I well, thought someone was trying to do it yesterday. Um, one of my husband's friends was a Cherokee Indian, and he died, and they buried him yesterday. Full Indian burial with live eagles. It's weird. Hmm. Never seen oh. that before. Hugh didn't know of J.C. Christensen having any connection whatsoever with any sort of Freemason Illuminati group or anything like that. Right. He said he was a great guy, a normal person. And even the official narrative says that I think, I think they call him John Christian or something like that, uh, that supposedly uh, yeah. built the Guidestones. And so right there, you know, he's alluding, they're alluding to his real name. And, uh, you know, I think, um, I think Alex Jones knows, but it was interesting when Hugh lived in Tennessee at the Manning Ranch that JC, uh, or I'm sorry, that Alex Jones was a newspaper publisher. And I think he still is for the Greenville Sun. He lived there in Greenville and, and he lived close to Hugh there, either neighbors or real close. Uh, and so, because of that, that's part of the reason you got Alex Jones on uh, InfoWars going out. And, that, and they've done this his whole life. All, every part of his life, there's a somebody named Alex Jones. So you get an Alex Jones by the CIA with obvious CIA connection ties. Uh, and even his birthday is the, the reverse date of the um, JFK assassination. <laughs> Everything about Alex Jones is fake. Uh, and then, and Alex Jones ends up with the chalk drawing that, that Hugh's family owned. Uh, and he used that to say the Illuminati was attacking uh, uh, on 9-11. So it's no wonder that he would take the Georgia Guidestones that he knew without any question had nothing to do with the Illuminati, uh, that had everything to do with right. Indians and Mother Earth and all that sort of thing. And take care of the earth and take care of your neighbors and twist it and turn it into something that it just absolutely had nothing to do. And what I find crazy about that is here, we're talking to the, you know, to Hugh and he's telling us, listen, I worked with the guy. I knew the guy. Okay. JC Christensen. I helped him uh, create much of his wealth, even though he only paid me a few dollars an hour back in seventies, minimum wage was, you know, a couple dollars an hour or whatever. And um, so Hugh didn't get paid much for it, but he, he made the inventions that, and not just him. I mean, he, there was other people on the line, you know, that invented, but then I, I go and I talk to these people and, and it's like, everybody's a space cadet. It's like, you can't speak common sense. Uh, they know Alex Jones is right. They know the Illuminati did this and it doesn't matter. Listen, I'm telling you, we're talking to the guy that knew him. Okay. The guy who built the guide stones. This is what you're saying is secondhand, third hand information coming from a CIA asset known as Alex Jones. Uh, right. 
And here we're giving you firsthand information, or, or you might say secondhand, since he knew uh, J.C. Christensen. Um, and that's as close of information as anybody's going to get, much closer than anything Alex Jones will tell you. And they, they, can't, they can't see the truth or just automatically refuse to understand it. And it blows my mind. Uh, just how how dumb everyone is and how blind everyone is. Not able to <laughs> even accept information um, from somebody like, like you when it's so much closer to the real events. It was his own family's artwork, that chalk drawing signed by his relative's gardener. His, uh, his aunts were Ava Gardner and Marguerite Gardner. I found a book where Marguerite Gardner is mm -hmm. mentioned in the life and times of Isabella Gardner. Uh, and people say, listen, uh, Hugh can't be related to Marguerite Gardner and actress Ava Gardner. And I said, well, why not? His aunt's mentioned in her book, you know, <laughs> uh, but, and they can't even put that together after you tell them. So, you know, I bought the book and I, and you show it to them and they still, it's like, it's like people are, are just completely space cadet blinded by the CIA and their disinformation. And, and you know, people like Alex Jones are just that, CIA disfor disinformation. And they work to hide the pedophiles like, uh, like those that, um, that, that um, abducted Hugh. And uh, the same right. CIA is the same ones that helped George Bush on 9-11 uh, and paired everything with his life including dump, dumping a plane in a field in Pennsylvania, just like his twin was killed. And he had the twin towers. Right. None of that was a coincidence. It's all alluding to the twin. Um, it all, that also has to do with the Warren report. All that. Yeah. The Pentagon bombing, you know, when they said it, a plane went into it, no. That was a missile. And that was to get rid of the Warren part, Warren report, and all his files that he had there that they were investigating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his case was already filed uh, to try to get back this, the theft of his um, trademark uh, bottom line that had been stolen by the right. bars, by uh, bands all around the world were using his name, using his own trademark that he invented and legally created. That word "bottom line" wasn't even in the dictionary until I think eighty or eighty-one or something, something near there. And um, uh, the WWE stole it, so you have Steve Austin out there saying, um, "Steve, Al yeah, Steve Austin out there saying," and that's the bottom line because Steve Austin said so or whatever. And then you know you think about, oh, and his Steve Austin's real name is Anderson, like the one of the kidnappers who who kidnapped him in, in Osborne's basement, All right? Uh, um, and he's from Austin, Texas, where Alex Jones' uh, studio is. You know, <laughs> uh, it all goes together so well. Austin, you know. Uh, Steve Austin, Austin, Texas, you know, it's, it all goes together perfectly. Um, and they've done this. His even, whole life. even even me throwing in this, it fits. I don't know why it fits, but it does. Uh, I mean, I do know why, but I was put in a girl's home when I was 14. Because my mom and dad thought I was going to do some bad stuff and I, that I never did. And I went there and I learned more about sex and drugs and abuse than I ever knew in my whole life. And it was run by Mac Ford. What's his last name? Ford. Spell it. Spell it. Ford. F-O-R-D. -F oh, Ford. You said Ford. Okay. Huh. That's interesting. Now, it all, it all makes sense that, yeah, well, uh, Hugh's uh, uncle actually was the caretaker of the Ford Mansion back in the 30s and 40s. Um, even uh, And where I was at was right around the corner from where Bonnie and Clyde were killed. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I wonder if they have a connection to the pedophiles in any way. Um, it's interesting that even uh, Clara... <laughs> Clara Harris was Ford's wife, or no, his wife's name was Clara, and there was a Clara Harris who was at Ford's theater that was invited by Lincoln when he was assassinated. She was yeah. a, 
a German socialite of some sort, I think, if I remember the story correctly. And she was actually invited by Lincoln and was at Ford's theater, Clara Harris. And then Ford married a Clara. And of course, uh, Henry Ford, um, he was alive when Lincoln was uh, assassinated. So we're real close to that time, uh, within a few years of it. I think he was born in 1861, if I remember correctly. Um, I have it in the first chapter of my book. I just can't, like I said, I just can't remember it in, uh, uh, in my head well enough, but I'm pretty darn close there. Um, now, it makes sense that- And the, then you got, you got the Cooper guy. Cooper, he wrote the book, A Pale Horse. Yeah. Hugh owned a white horse. Right. <laughs> yeah, you can see the connection there. Cooper also married his yeah. who? His daughter. Yeah. Yeah. His real, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he hired Hugh hired an attorney to get her pay for her divorce, and the police killed Cooper. Yep, and then the FBI so an essay, up an entire story about Dean Cooper jumping out of an airplane. Yeah, so to cover up that whole thing, the, the, the FBI concocted this whole story that everybody knows now about D.B. Cooper jumping out of an airplane when the real Dan Cooper was, was a rapist pedophile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, yep. um, it makes sense that the that this pedophile gang would operate out of Michigan and why there's so much of this crap going on in that area of the world because back in the 50s and 60s and even the 70s you know Detroit was the richest city on earth it's not the hellhole it is yeah. today as far as financially speaking all the big 3 automakers were there um, it was a hellhole. I mean, it was the biggest uh, crime rate on earth, you know, and the um, murders. Just yeah, well, yeah, as far as that thing. goes, and as far as gangs and mafias and thugs, and you know, that was all there. Yeah. But you also make had to make main good people, you know. They were just harder to find. <laughs> now, we had um, Osborne was the, was the kidnapper, and now today to hide this truth, they make sure that they put Osborne, Michael Osborne, as the head of the sex crimes division of the FBI right now. And then you have him and Gina Osborne heading up the task force in the FBI for the sex crimes division. So we can see that they've, they've covered their own bases. And that's not the only way that they've covered their own bases. There's other people in our government uh, too right now who are connected to Hugh's story. Uh, for ex for example, um, Hugh grew up with um, not far from uh, Roseanne Barr, okay? And the Barr family, right now, Emily yep. Barr is the CEO of WJR Media, the Detroit Media, where... Um, uh, <laughs> Is, is, is Osborne still still, sing, is still singing or playing or something on there right now? I think so. I think Osborne's wife or something, Sharon Osborne, might still be on that channel. Well, anyway, who owns WJR Radio in Detroit, where Emily Barr is the CEO, and we have Attorney General Barr in the White House. Um, who owns that is Graham Media, who's also Trump's uh, friend, Senator Graham. So you have the Grams and the Bars working together. Right. And interestingly, is that Roseanne Barr got with Kathy O'Brien, and they both claim to be MK Ultra victims in Oakland County there in Michigan, right around where Hugh grew up. And so they hijacked Hugh's story, went around saying that these were, and he was not an MK Ultra victim, but what they um, ascribe to MK Ultra victims is the sort of things that Hugh went through. There's no, there is no real MK Ultra. That's part of an FBI cover up, CIA cover up story uh, that the media gives to you so that coast to coast can run with it and make up stuff uh, or whoever, you know, uh, Alex Jones or whoever can take these mm -hmm. stories and run with them. But none of them are actually true. There was no. There was no MK Ultra, but there was a pedophile gang, and it's run by Osborns. And even today, they're out there arresting uh, pedophiles. It was in the news, but all they're arresting are the low um, patsies 
with and completely neglecting the people arresting them are the people running the the bigger pedophile rings still covering up for the assassination of jfk and the murder of all those little kids up in oakland county um so yeah that was the other thing that Barr was covering up is yeah. the oakland and county helping them do Just it like is graham media that owns wjr and i think i think sharon osborne is one of them <laughs> on there still today and it's run by uh, Emily Barr, and you have Attorney General Barr uh, and Senator Graham right there in, next to Trump covering up all this stuff in the media, and and President Trump doesn't do anything. He doesn't say anything. All he'll make you think that he's coming against him, he'll get some low-level uh, pedophiles or something like that, while at the same time, he's got the people running the whole thing right there in the top of his uh, government. Um, and some of us can see through it, but the people who think they, these truthers that want to know the truth and, but they won't listen to the, to what's really going on are the people that are afraid to really point fingers and name names by knowing Hugh's story. You could get actual real justice by just going out and pointing out the real people who did these things rather than just blaming right. some nebulous, fictitious entity like the MK Ultra or the Illuminati, none of these people. You see, you can't point a finger at the Illuminati because who's the Illuminati? You know, you, you can't you can't affirm that right. they're the Illuminati. But Hugh says, "Listen, I was raped by Daryl Hall. Okay, uh, well he was doing terrible things down there in the basement. I'm going to keep this PG rated, um, but we could describe if we had to some of the horrible things that that Daryl Hall did to him right there in Osborne's basement. Um, you know, we could point the fingers at the head of the FBI right now and say." listen you're the you're the the pedophile family osborne uh you know we got your number we know we know exactly what's going on here <laughs> we can we can talk to you know uh, how about find out. yeah how about, uh, yeah how about them letting out uh white boy rick and him claiming the reason they let him out early was because he gave them information to stop the drug trade in Michigan, and he knows it's a lie, but it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the poor guy got 30 years for something, you know, he probably didn't have anything to do with whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, and, but he was the one that told him about that. He was the one that told him about stopping the drug trade. Oh, okay. That's why they arrested him. Okay. See, I don't know all the information on that story. It's interesting. Yeah. Now, Hugh did stop a CIA-operated drug ring going on on his farm in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And um, I know you know that, Amy, but I'm just kind of reiterating that for those that don't know the story. Um, and that CIA drug ring had well-known names that were buying drugs and selling drugs on that property, two of which, uh, Nichols and McVeigh, they later had to cover up by using those names. As, and it may have been the same agents. We don't know. But they used Nichols and McVeigh on, in 95 to, to blow up the Oklahoma City uh, building and cover up that story so that they could not come back uh, and testify against um, the, the drug rate, the drug ring being operated by the CIA. There were also CIA agents involved there like Robert Tosh Plumley and uh, Kiki Camarina. Uh, and interestingly, Hughes, one of Hughes' wives' names was Kiki. Uh, well, she was his fiance. Uh, so none of that is a coincidence. They've used these stories. The whole story of Kiki Camarina might be completely made up just to cover the name Kiki because they cover every aspect of his life because the people that attacked him are related to governors and publishers and big wigs that you see in Hollywood and Graham media. And so there's so many yeah. entities that are affected that the CIA monitors everything he says. They're probably monitoring what we're saying right now, which I know that just sounds like we're scared or something like that. We're not, we're not, we're just saying, you know, we, when I'm listening, I'm definitely you, not scared. Yeah. When I'm talking to Hugh, you know, we hear typing in the background sometimes, you know, it's really bizarre and they'll stop typing oh, yeah. when we stop talking, you know, and as soon as we start talking, they'll start typing again. You know, I know they're listening to every freaking thing they do. It's just like that, uh, that movie, 
uh, where he's speaking, uh, where there's a narration in uh, Will Ferrell's the main character, and he has to act out everything that's going on in the movie. And that's related to him, uh, that he stops right there at the swimming pool at number 44, because Hugh had four wives murdered and, uh, and uh, was abducted at four years old. So he stops right there at the swimming pool, and his, his coat points right down to the number 44 next to the swimming pool. And uh, Will Ferrell has to act out everything the narrator does. I can't think of the name of the movie right now. Um, yeah, maybe it'll come to me. But um, that's his life. They've written his script, and they are forcing that script out into the media to cover up for their real crimes. Right. A lot of those stories are just entirely yeah. fake, like D.B. Cooper. And then they're Batman on top Batman. of it, they're trying to discredit what he has said is truth. They'll go and change the dates. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, Ruby Ridge. Yeah. Yeah. The whole, whole story about Ruby Ridge is entirely fictional. Uh, as far as the dates, they've, they've moved it by like 10 years and even the place and everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Interesting what they did. And they, they may have reenacted it. I don't know. They could have just completely made it up. But there was a whole nother Ruby Ridge that happened at least 10 years before the one that everybody knows about. Uh, and it's hard to say exactly what happened. But it's interesting that the wrestler, Ruby Valentino, um, was paid to protect pedophile bars in that story um right. and here he is and he 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 was a married man but i think he was gay and that the people who wrote about him knew it because they always said about his flamboyant uh dress code and usually when i hear the word flamboyant i think a homosexual so i think maybe he had some connection himself or that just by saying that the the fbi writing this story about ruby ridge was alluding to uh the homosexual bars that he was protecting probably pedophile rings related to that um, right. yeah <laughs> and what that whole story was about is they were afraid that uh people were going to retaliate against the the pedo bars uh so they used him and then i can't say exactly how uh on video but rico valentino also was um known closely by somebody very close to Hugh also personally. None of that is coincidence. So I have to, I have to say that in, you know, a little bit discreetly. So I'm not uh, giving it too much away there, but um, so none of that's, none of that's a coincidence. The FBI just moved the information by 10 years. So I have to be careful when I write, because if I put the date that Hugh knows when it happened in there, anybody who Googles, it'll say, Oh no, this happened at this time. And in this place, when it really happened over here at this time and at this place. And there's a lot of stories I have to either just run with the date they give us or not mention the date because um, otherwise people that don't know anything or, uh, just automatically trust anything in the media or just going to Google it, see a Wikipedia article that gives the wrong date and say, Oh, look, you're wrong. You know? <laughs> so. Right. I don't think people will know the truth unless it slapped them directly in the face. Hmm. Well, when we give them the truth, they, they, actively campaign against it it's really bizarre to see how people can't put connections together because they've been trained by the cia um, to automatically blame nebulous forces that nobody can see you know the illuminati and the freemasons you know um and i i myself right. am not and i'm not a freemason but i'm not against them either uh recently i looked into them even there's a big uh, freemason hall just not even a half mile from where I live. And uh, if you watch some of my last videos, I walk through their property and kind of talk about it and stuff. I went and I talked to them and I tried to, to even get them to understand like basic information. I kind of tested them without them knowing it to see if they could understand like basic patterns, to see if they could see any real mysteries at all. Like they're supposed to be about the mysteries and none of them seem to get it. You know, <laughs> now I know they don't reveal much and all that stuff, but these people are not running the world, Amy. Uh, these people, you know, these Freemasons are not the pedophiles. They're not the ones going out doing these bad things. And you have experience 
from when you were a kid knowing who some of these people are and it verifies exactly what he says these these people are not freemasons very the much time. so yeah they're 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 my neighbors, my neighbors i mean i was a young, very young child i was before i was even walking our neighbors were part of the police department mm -hmm. and they didn't do right by me and my sister yeah so and it's all and it's all in michigan so <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah exactly it's all all right there in that same little corner and area of michigan right mm -hmm. my dad he used to work for osmobile it's just it, it's just all there <laughs> you know we got family i still have family all over michigan mm -hmm. not nothing i want to go back to though yeah 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 you know, kind of had my fill I mean, there's so many things with, with Hugh's story. I mean, how do you write all these books? I guess maybe there's been hundreds of books now written about Jimmy Hoffa. And Hugh was the first person detained by the FBI for the murder of Jimmy Hoffa. And it's not in a single book. That's not possible. If, if a sane person heard what I just said, they would automatically say, oh my gosh, why are they hiding that from me? A sane person would say, I need to look into this. What does Hugh know about the murder of Jimmy Hoffa? They did arrest him for his murder. <laughs> it is not even in one single book. No, oh, yeah. Jackie O'Brien, the guy they went to right after that, and they arrested him, he's in every book. You know? But but um, but they never put him in that. Um, and I can't find a sane person who'll say, whoa, what did you say there? Hold, hold the horse, stop the presses. I need to look at that. I need to go back and examine why there's a hundred books out there and on Jimmy Hoffa and not one of them mentions this, you know? And, and the other thing is you can tell him right where he's buried. He can take them to it. You'll never be able to dig it up because now there's a monument there. There's a monument there? Yes. You have to tell me more about that, Amy. I don't know about any money. It is uh, has to do with uh, like all the like the Ford company and all. It, yeah, all that. It's the land where it's sitting, where Jimmy Hoffa's barn. He said it used to be under a garage. Well, now that garage is no longer a garage. It has turned into like this museum thing for Ford. Ford Motor Company, GM, you know, all that. Okay. All they're all in. It's like in a circle. I don't remember what it's called though. Well, I I've uh, heard, I don't know if we're getting two stories mixed up or what, but I've heard uh, I've heard him talk about how the family farm there where he lived is where um, his um, father-in-law is probably the person that buried Jimmy Hoffa. Probably didn't pull the trigger on him, but is where he buried him, and that property was sold right. over the years and then bought by a junkyard and, and it went uh, to a gas station okay and there's a gas station there it too. was also about like that so yeah. now that property is no longer a junkyard are you saying and maybe it was no it, no, it is now it is a uh, something like a dedication space that's really interesting i can't even explain it i have to, I have, to have to look it up to tell you what it is mm. Yeah, last I heard it was G&G &G Auto. But it could have been sold out 10 times since then, you know. A junkyard at the time. Last I heard about it. So anyway, it was on 26 Mile Road in New Haven. And, you know, he could tell you this is, this is where Jimmy Hoff was buried. Well, none of the others can do that. And then they go to a place right, right. where one of his former girlfriends uh, lived, Mary Miller. And they say, oh, the FBI found a spot of blood at Miller's house, you know, <laughs> and uh, this spot of Jimmy Hoffa's blood. And this proves that Sherhan uh, shot, um, uh, Sheerhan shot uh, uh, Hoffa. All of that is, is complete baloney right there on Clinton River Road. And then you end up with Clinton in the White House. <laughs> you know, so, and they put this together so, so well. And the FBI has constructed these stories and even right. our entire political system around hiding 
the the pedophiles and the rapists that are running it. So this pedophile ring that people talk about is not MK Ultra, but it is big and it is evil. Um, some of them may be Satanists, but it's not really Satanists that are you know at the top uh, running everything. It's just right. criminals. Uh, some of them are connected to the throne in England, uh, without a doubt, um, because Hugh's family, uh, he's related to the kings and queens of Europe. So it would make sense that, uh, you know, the, these people would be attacking him from the throne in England. So uh, some of them are just um, just bikers. And, of course, you know a little bit about the biker uh, aspect and the Hells Angels and all that. No, I know a lot about yeah yeah and uh, and the bikers were connected to the police in michigan uh especially in the detroit area so they're the ones that uh that probably had something to do with actually pulling the trigger on hoffa uh if it wasn't a policeman also so no, i don't know yeah so i wouldn't uh worry about uh Find it right now, uh, Amy. We can we can always find another time. I'll, I'll uh, yeah, try. if I think of what it is, I'll tell you what it is later. I, it's some kind of, it's got like these plaques all around the outside of it, and there's like a mound in the middle. That's really it, it, I can't even, exp I can't even tell you what, I seen it and I was like, and I told it to Hugh and he was like, yep, they changed wow. it to that. Yeah, I want to see that. Yeah, it's like almost like sacred ground, and there's no way anybody could ever. Right, right. They made sure nobody right. could dig that up. You yeah. what I'm saying? For 100 or 200 yeah. years or something, yeah, and then it won't matter. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? And then by then it'll be long forgotten, and who they won't care anymore. Well, the FBI puts all crazy stories out about how it was at Miller's house and that it took place. This guy named Shearhan, it wasn't there, did it or Toko and all them had something to do it. No, uh, I all, and, and, and Toko worked with, uh, or worked not with, but worked, uh, he, he visited a lot. He was a friend of Hughes when he worked there in Shelby, Michigan, and he was not a mobster and he had nothing to do with the, the mafia and all this. All this is just completely made up. And the people that Hugh knows personally, Hugh's story never gets out, but all this fake information, this FBI information, that Toko was a mobster, the sheer and the mafia guy, and none of it's true. The mafia had nothing to right. do with it. It was about police. It was about uh, uh, biker gangs. Everything you hear in the media is complete baloney concerning Jimmy Hoffa's murder. Same people that killed Kennedy, same people that killed the kids, same people that killed Hugh's twin, the boy in the box. And I've got that book on order. It's uh, on the way now. So I'll be uh, uh, getting more information about that soon. Um, everything that we know is wrong there's like a there's even a song by weird al yankovic interesting about that name al but we could talk about that another time it says everything you know is wrong and it's true okay it might sound humorous but everything we learn in the media is some sort of uh, propaganda it's kind of like that movie too well, what was that movie that came out where the guy was put on these special glasses and every time we looked around he could see the words obey follow you know, worship the government, whatever. You know what? It, all those stupid signs. Yeah, it was called I mean, "They Live." Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, you know what I mean, it, he was right dead on, and it's still like that. Yeah. That movie was so passed over, like it's nothing that never. No. And he was close. Had that wrestler Roddy Piper on there, and Roddy Piper, uh, you know, was a WWF WWE wrestler, and. So, Another interesting thing about the WWE and WWF is, well, they stole the name Bottom Line to call their events Bottom Line Events. Um, and oh, what was I going to say? I lost track of my thought. Oh, I hate it when my brain does that. Ah. <laughs> so embarrassing. Uh, yeah, trying to think. It was like it was right there in my head a second ago. Uh, yeah, but they – oh, yeah, yeah, okay. They stole – not only bottom line, but they stole the, the World Wrestling Federation, WWF, from the World Wildlife Fund. And so just like, and this is just proof, you know, that, that they steal things like this. Okay, they stole WWF 
they got right. sued. World Wildlife Fund got their trademark back. But here, Hugh, he's, you know, they, they steal his money. They take everything from him. Even uh, his inheritance from Mickey Rooney and Ava Gardner was stolen and replaced by uh, penny stocks and all this. Everything he's had has been taken from him. His wife's murder. He has no chance of, of retaliating against uh, uh, the thieves. Goes and files a... Um, uh, a suit in court to get his his bottom line name back and it makes it to has to have been filed at some point in the pentagon and because it would have been hundreds of billions of dollars for this lawsuit i mean you have every every bar in the entire country calling themselves um uh, lawyers bar calling themselves bottom line on their on their thing you have the wwe still in bottom line events you have bars all over the country uh drinking bars uh all over the country calling themselves bottom line bar you have hundreds of websites using that word all of them owe this huge amount of money to heal um so it's worth hundreds of billions of dollars and right after that you get 9-11 and they bury that place and probably where right there where that suit would have been in the pentagon is blown up by a missile and there's no body surely dumb enough at this point in history to think that that could have been an airplane that hit the pentagon uh, because the hole was right there right there on ground level planes don't fly at ground level they lose uh lift and would crash like that you can't do that uh, and, and if it was tilted up, you know, the, the fuselage was up, it would have made a big old giant hole crashing through the whole top. I mean, it's only 77 foot tall, you know, uh, like the other flight, flight 77, you know, and it crashed 77 minutes after takeoff and all this. The whole story is constructed. It's an obvious missile damage. The most surveilled place on earth doesn't have any video feed of an airplane hitting it. Yeah. Well, there's a reason they hit it because it wasn't an airplane. You know, there's light posts right in front of the okay. hole that the wings would have taken out. Uh, clearly, that was sabotage. Mm -hmm. Well, who can do that? Only something powerful. The CIA, a man in a cave on the other side of the world, can't do that. Uh, but anyway, Hughes' case had made it to the Pentagon, and that's why they freaking blew it up. His trademarks were in the. Well, oh, but then again, they got the guy. The, yeah. the guy that killed you know, they blew up the towers and all that. They got him too. But you know what? They had to honor him and bury him at sea. <laughs> uh, they had to bury him at sea, you know, uh, because yeah, yeah, you can't well, oh, you can't have their custom being bad. Come on. Right. We got to give them some respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the, the trademarks and receipts for bottom line and everything that were filed at federal court were kept in the twin towers. So all that was buried all on the same day to make sure that Hugh couldn't win his hundred billion dollar lawsuit, you know, or it could have been more than that. It probably more. I mean, I'm sure the amount was just unfathomable to them. So they had to do something. Um, well, Amy, it's been a nice conversation. We've been, been at it for a while and uh, go too long. Ain't nobody going to watch this. So we should probably just cut it off here. Well, that's okay. If they don't watch it, they don't learn. That's what I got to say. That's true. That's true. All right. Well, and we'll I'll try again hopefully, for another day. Hopefully somebody will. <laughs> and hopefully somebody will have enough sense to go, hold the presses. What did he just say? I need to look into that. That would be a dream if you exactly. had enough sense to do that. All right. Well, nice talking to you, Amy. That would be a great dream.